Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and as I continue with yet another movie review, I decided to do yet another funny and hilarious uh, horror comedy that you never get tired of, and yet you get to watch this over and over and over again. It also became a, a huge hit at the box office when it first came out. It was been overhyped, overblown by tons of advertisement over there. It was the most talked about production of all time. And surprisingly enough, it almost started out as a TV series. Because they f first started to create their own TV pilot of it long before they, they decided to make it into a feature film. And that movie, my friend, is this. Zombieland. That's right, Zombieland. The most awesome, hilarious zombie flick I've ever seen. And quite frankly, I, I, I enjoy this movie even more when I first saw this. Um, in fact, I saw this um, as a double feature with Astro Boy, the CGI animated film that's based on, on one of the most popular anime series of all time by by legend Azuma Tezuka. Yeah. I, I had to see, but you know, after seeing that movie, I had to see this one because because I, I heard a lot of people really enjoyed it even more, and I was even more excited when when it was first announced. Having to see all the ads everywhere about this, and I thought, yeah, this is definitely definitely right up there with Shaun of the Dead. When I heard of this, I, I was really excited when I heard about this movie, and you know, with with such an awesome cast too, Woody Harrison, Jesse Eisenberg, Emma Stone, and Abigail Breslin you know, teaming up. This was definitely what I expected. A movie which that had some awesome dialogue coming from these uh, characters, and they go around in the entire world, which turned out to be. The zombie apocalypse with nothing but zombies and taking over the world and and are struggling to survive and, and they have to use all these rules you know, in order to in order to avoid and kill a zombie as long as you don't want to becoming one of them. So yeah. And to me this was original, right there. And I was just amazed considering how small this movie really was. You know, only eighty eight minutes. A worth of of excitement. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna get right to this movie. It stars Woody Harrelson, yeah, Je Jesse Eisenberg, Emma Stone, Abigail Breslin, with special appearances by Amber Heard, Mike White, and of course, the biggest surprise of all. Bill Murray. That's right. He's actually in this movie. And I'm going to talk about that uh, once we get to the review. So, here it goes. It's written by Red Reese and Paul Wernick, which they're behind this team. And it's directed by first time director Ruben Fletcher. Let's get right to this uh, awesome movie. The movie begins set at what seems to be a zombie apocalypse that's flooding the entire nation, uh, mostly from a mutated strain of what seems to be mad cow disease. Yeah, because apparently they want to come up with a, yet another joke about another uh, epidemic disease. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, they populated into the entire human race, and they all become, as we speak, zombies coming around, you know, eating people's flesh and so on and so forth. A nerdy college student by the name of Columbus, who's played by Jesse Eisenberg, yep, and they once again have to have names of that's based on the state or country or whatever, or even a city for that matter. Kind of like what Night of the Creeps had offered when. They use their character names, you know, based on the director's names. <laughs> so yeah, this is yet another film that got the idea. 
but this is different. He is about to make way for his college dorm in Austin, Texas to Columbus, Ohio to see if, if his parents are still alive. But surprisingly he encounters an another survivor by the name of Talasiz, and he's a, a badass one, who's played by Woody Harrelson, who's particularly violent in killing all the zombies out there. Though he does not appear to be a sociable or any other type, he actually allows Columbus to travel with him. He always mentions about his his puppy that has already been killed, yeah. as well as uh, obsession with Twinkies. Yeah, because we already know that that because <laughs> we already know about what happened later on, a few years later, when, back in 2012, when when they were when Hostess was already going out of business and they were. And they were just continuing with the entire suites, including Twinkies, until they finally brought him back from the dead. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> While he had a hard time looking for Twinkies, uh, they wound up uh, going to a supermarket in order to uh, find some more on the stores. But once again, you know, they, they're being outrun by the zombies, which apparently, you know, they had to use all the rules that had to make. Yeah, because during earlier in the film, Columbus had to come up with his own rules for survival you know, in order to outrun a zombie, such as uh, cardio, double tap, uh, beware of bathrooms, seat belts, cast iron skillet, travel lights, bounty paper towels, bowling ball, don't be a hero, limbered up, so on and so forth. You know, he comes up with all these 33 rules you know, that he had to mention. It was it was part of the gag in the movie, but I think it worked so well. Once they went to the supermarket, they spotted the two um, girls by the name of Wichita and Little Rock. They're both played by Emma Stone and Abigail Breslin. Apparently, they're actually con artists, and they actually trick Talisees and Columbus into handing over their car and their weapons, pretending that that Little Rock is actually infected by the disease. Yeah, <laughs> bunch of crazy uh, girls out there. They, they found a Hummer H2 loaded whip weapons and they go after them, only to find out this, that they're actually trapping them together and taking them hostage. So he also stole his gun back and had a standoff with Wichita until Columbus had lashes out an anchor that they had bigger problems to worry about. Yeah, because they're trying to survive the zombie apocalypse. Actually, they're trying to go to a an amusement park in Los Angeles called Pacific Playland, which basically is supposed to be an area where it's a free of zombies. After learning that their hometown's been destroyed and their parents are likely to be killed already, they went straight to Hollywood. Now, here's one scene where they actually went inside the mansion, and it turns out to be, and I'm going to give you that spoiler right now. Okay, now, if you're with me on this one, don't watch this, uh, what I'm going to mention. But that's okay, because I think we're going to get right to it. Anyway, they finally directed to the mansion what seems to be, as we speak, Bill Murray. And they actually came by and they were watching the movie Ghostbusters. You know, well, Columbus went to watch him with Little Rock. Apparently this whole thing was sort of a joke when, you know, when uh, Bill Murray was actually pretending to be a zombie, mostly to, you know, just distract all the other zombies out there pretending like he's one of them. But when, when he was doing a practical joke against them, yeah, Columbus accidentally shoots him, only pretending that he was going to be, as we speak, a real zombie, but it was him all along. So yeah, that's, that's a shame. So they were basically they were hanging out in the mansion, you know, just playing Monopoly and talking about, you know, the story about about Talahiz's dog and how he misses him. It might be, and it, and of course, here's another spoiler. I'm gonna reveal again. God damn, I hate this. <laughs> it turns out that his dog was actually a kid, his son. Yeah, his very young son. So, 
once again they left them behind inside of Manchester just to go to the, the amusement park and just to have their, the best time of their lives until more zombies appeared and and yep they're struggling to survive by killing every single one of them which it's up to uh, Tullahese and Columbus to stop these crazy zombies well you know they're still up there and, you know and they're getting rid of them one by one and that's pretty much how it is <laughs> yeah that's basically what the movie's all about and I gotta say, it was fun. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. I, I never got tired of it. It's it's just definitely worth it of, of watching it. And I'm, and I'm going to say this once again. I'm, I'm sorry I had to give away you know, some of the parts in, in this movie, including the cameo. But let's face it. It's such a fun movie. Might as well spoil it. <laughs> I, I like the fact that they had a great um, idea of this movie, why they wanted to use a nerdy kid. I mean, it could have been played by, you know, Michael Cera or someone, but Jesse Eisenberg was really, you know, best known to play nerdy roles in, in movies, considering that he was already in his 20s at the time. He's now 30 now, and, and he's always been doing a lot of that stuff. Uh, in fact, um... I, I always remember Jesse Eisenberg from that that short-lived TV series uh, where he actually plays Kenny, sort of like a runny joke of the character from South Park, you know, the character who always dies all the time, and he always comes back to life no matter what happens. Every single episode he always gets killed. Yeah. Well, basically he's playing the same character that he does. Yeah, this was also a show with Anne Hathaway. Ironically enough, both of them team up together with a movie called Rio along with its sequel so that's so that's kind of an interesting surprise that you know they both team up together for after that TV series got canceled but this movie had everything I mean it's basically what it is you know trying to survive from from a zombie apocalypse and, <laughs> and you're gonna have a hard time getting rid of them and the fact that you get to see awesome characters that goes around you know killing them and you just really enjoy them. I think Woody Harrelson did an awesome job playing the role as Telehees, and this is probably the best role he ever had played in his entire career, because he's known to play different roles like this. Now, Emma Stone, you know, definitely wanted to play a, a hot girl after her last film with uh, the movie uh, Super Bad. You know, he, she wants to play in yet another role. Well, she's just becoming the badass, hot-ass chick. Uh, Albergill Breslin, I mean, coming from kid roles like uh, Kit Kitridge and <laughs> Zim's Island, you know, she wants to play you know, a 12 year old that's, you know, that's a badass also. It's just amazing. I mean, considering that they're both sisters, you know, it's just strange. Well, yeah, and. It was awesome to see a cameo of Bill Murray in this movie. I mean, even though surprisingly it's a it's an instant surprise, but I thought it was awesome that they actually got to see that guy because otherwise they would have just added yet another different cameo of, of another movie of some other actor or, or any other. But I'm glad they chose Bill Murray. It was definitely worth a treat, considering the fact that. Bill Murray was in the film with Rhodey Harrelson in the film in the comedy by the Feller Brothers called King Pin. Yeah. Which apparently he plays the villain and, and Woody Harrelson's character gets what he gets. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, it's such a fun movie and surprisingly enough, even though they originally was gonna start it out as a TV pilot yeah, for their new series. It actually was, later on, going to be a series that aired on Amazon. Um, yeah, the very first pilot that came out, but sad to say, it was only one pilot that they just released in 2013. And they didn't release anything after that, sadly. Yeah. However, they are going to be planning on making a sequel to this movie, and I hope for that, because maybe that this time they'll they might have the same cast again, I hope they do, and maybe maybe come up with something different this time. 
I just hope it doesn't end up becoming like a cameo of, of some stupid actor that I don't even give a flying fuck about. But maybe someone that's even better. You know? If it worked for Bill Murray, it should work for someone else too. Yeah. Because let's face it, you know, what the last time I saw Woody Harrelson team me up with Jesse Eisenberg was that terrible Now You See Me and yeah, it wasn't worthy of that either. Despite the fact that they teamed up together after Zombieland. So I hope this time you know, they get to team up again along with Abigail Breslin and Emma Stone. Yeah, now, now she'll probably have red hair again and <laughs> instead of blonde like she played in the role in uh, the Amazing Spider Man movies. That's Zombieland. And um, I give that film a solid and surprisingly awesome five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.